to the Assistant Commissioner of the Police, Scotland Yard. Sir, the amazing events which I am reporting may be said to have begun on the evening of August the 17th, 1944. You've had Postman was cycling up Heron's Hill on his way to deliver mail at the hospital. His name was Joseph Higgins. I begin with him because he was the first to die. The hospital itself lay a mile away, and Elizabethan Manor requisitioned and converted in the emergency war. Another new paragraph. In the operating theatre that night, there was a surgeon, Mr. Eden. Nurse Woods. Nurse Sanson. Theatre sister, Bates. Nurse Lindley. And the anaesthetist, Dr. Barnes. August the 17th, 1944. By August the 22nd, two of these people would be dead. And one of them, a murderer. Now, oh, that second doodle bug this afternoon dropped right behind the post office. Just as I was asking if these were sorted out. They were sorted out all right. So were we. Well, that's the lot five and a bill for Dr. Barnes. Might be a receipt. Yeah, it might be. Well, I should be late on duty. So long, Mac. Can't be in two places at once. That old warden takes a different view. All right for that Saturday, Joe. You bet. Have a quiet night. Some hope. What is good morale, discipline and confidence for one dependent on the other? I repeat, discipline and confidence. And you cannot have confidence without positive thinking. Be you uh, students or nurses, under bombardment or otherwise. A small instance, you may smile when I tell you that one of my first acts when I took over this hospital a month ago was to order the word waste to be painted out from the refuse bins and instead to substitute the word salvage. Salvage. A humble example of the difference between positive and negative thinking. An essential factor in the building and maintenance of morale. Trying to race me on my bicycle. A bit late, aren't you, Joe? Yes. You do look like top right. It remains to be seen what other numbers will be suffixed to the letter. As the desperate Churchill lies frantically to save his face, London and the home county are feeling under the incessant fire of our terrible B1. This is Germany calling. This is Germany calling. There, yeah, that's all, sister. I thought it wasn't a die particular. Is she all right? It doesn't turn to hair. You're all right, isn't it? Yes, thank you, sir. Perfectly. It's always a bit of an ordeal the first time. I wonder where that doodle bag dropped. Somewhere near the village, sir. I'll be missed my house. What a life. Well, it can't last forever. Nurses end up to it awfully well. So do the doctors, sir. I can get used to anything at the time. Well, it must have been a bit of a change for you too, sir, considering. Considering what? Your past. Hmm? Thank you. I mean Harley Street, Rolls Royce, lovely ladies. All, all are gone, the old familiar faces. They left their appendixes behind them. They were happy to be in the French room. And even happier to be in your consulting room. It's those eyes, of course. The wounded stag looks that no woman can resist. Woods. 
Why aren't you tidying up? There's plenty to do. Yes, sister. Clear up the swaths and get some fresh saline. There may be more castle to Yes. I'm not being in the least unreasonable. I naturally thought you'd go with me tomorrow. But darling, it's just a tatty little hospital hop, not a ball of the Dorchester. Does it matter who goes with who? I suppose not, but... I was about to add, Eden had a nerve to ask you. Surgeons quite often ask nurses on informal occasions. I know, I suppose he thought twice about it. I wonder. Now you're being ridiculous. Am I? Not to say pompous. I'm being nothing of the kind. Must you shout? <laughs> you know, it's really amazing how you always contrive to put me in the wrong. Well, you seem to think you can even dictate who I'm to go to a dance with. I don't want to dictate to anybody. I've none of the instincts of a dictator. Then why dictate? What is the matter with you these days, Freddie? I simply took it for granted you were going with me, that's all. I don't like being taken for granted. Well, we are supposed to be engaged. You mean we were? Is that remark intended to have any point? Yes. Can't go on like Nurse this. Nurse Linley, as you've nothing to do here, would you please move outside? Dr. Barnes, I do hope you won't be long. There's still a great deal of clearing up to do. I don't know what's happened to hospital discipline this evening. Ready, Barney? Let's hope that's all for this evening. Right, sister. Time for a hundred up before dinner, can we? Yes, right. I'll follow you down. You want to get some rest, nurse? You're on night duty, aren't you? Yes, sir. I'm just going off for now. Good. Oh, good night, sister. Good night, Mr. Eden. Casualties. Woods, you'll be needed in casualty reception with Dr. Barnes. I'll finish here. and he's had a quarter of morphine. I'm shocked, too. What's his name? No, it's left blank. No, I did it, it is. He couldn't have been wearing one. We'll have to make room for him in some cats. Someone's sure to come forward. Tell Mr. Eden. Yes. I... Compound, otherwise straightforward. No internal injuries. You haven't cleaned him up, nurse? No, sir. He was still badly shocked when they brought him in. I'm quite right. They fixed him up with a splint, and I think it's best to leave him his ears for a while. X-ray first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. And then we'll take him up to the theater and operate at uh, 10 o'clock, all right? Very good, sir. Good. Clean him up a bit now, but don't worry him. Yes, sir. Are there any more of those tonight, nurse? No. Meaning yes, I suppose. Why don't you take a leave? I might later. I'd sooner work now. Mm, I suppose you were right coming back here so soon after. Oh, my dear, it isn't the best of atmospheres for you now. Constant reminders. There are lots of jobs outside, but you'd be hoping just as much. I want to carry on here. My dear, you're young. You don't want to poison your life blaming yourself for something which you couldn't help. I knew your mother, don't forget. And... Please. All right. Well, the elder. You never turned off the wires. You never turned off the... You poison me. Oh. Am I late, Esther? Sorry. I fell asleep. What's the matter? Well, hello, Freddy. You look completely out on your feet, dear. Yes, I am a bit. Plenty of sleep. That's what you need. Hop up now. I'll see to everything. Anyone to fix? Yes, three stat, one SOS. It's all in the prescription book. I'll give them off again. Thank you, Freddy. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. for the poor old surgeon? Yes, I think so, sir. Wonderful. I'm parched. Busy night, after all. You never know how it's going to be with bug bombs. No, it should all end up with elephantiasis of the ears. Is it a Thanks. How's Barney? All right, sir. 
I detect a slight note of friction in the feather this evening. Backward? Good. I like Bunny. So do I, Kirk, you know. Naturally, since you're engaged. You're not. Hmm? Since when? This evening. Oh, I am sorry. What's the trouble, or shouldn't I ask? I suppose it's my fault. When a woman says that, it usually means she's convinced it isn't. Oh, I don't know. We always seem to be getting on each other's nerves. Well, nobody's nerves are quite what they were. Especially after being cooped up here for years, working long hours under one sort of bombardment or another. There's not. Not that I ever interfered in these things. Don't you? Anyway, I never admit it. What's the matter? I was just looking at you and thinking. Why? That Barney must be an awful fool. He's not. He's sweet. But it is my fault in a way. In what way? Well, he's probably a better sort of person than I am altogether, but he gets so possessive. And he's firmly of the opinion that there should be only one man in your life who is Barney. It wasn't that sort of quarrel, though. Wasn't it? Not really. Please forgive me. Look out! It's cut down. It's coming down. Hear it? It's going to hit us. All right, it's gone over. You're quite safe. I just come into the ward when he started. Under the fire. Terrible V1. Terrible V1. Churchill telling lies. Telling lies to say. What is it? No, no, Churchill. some sort of quotation. Churchill. Don't talk anymore, old man. Take it easy. There's nothing to worry about. You'll get to sleep now. You're in the sixth of more, okay? I'd just come to look for you, Mr. Eden, about the operation tomorrow. I understand you want it at 10 o'clock. That's right, sister. Then I'll put back the cartilage until 11. Thank you, sister. Good night, Mr. Eden. Good night, sister. Freddy overslept or something. There's some cocoa for you. I'll heat it up. Please don't bother. I don't want anything. Esther. Esther, what's the matter? Mr. Eaton wants me to leave here. Oh, he's very sensible. You should never have come back. I can't go yet. I won't. Well, it's up to you. Are you sure you're all right? He saw I was upset over Higgins. Higgins? The postman. The unidentified fracture. I hadn't recognized him then, of course. Not until I cleaned him up. He was buried, too, like she was. They had to dig him out. I couldn't help picking up... Higgins. Precisely, Joseph Higgins was wheeled to the operating theatre. I shall need a new oxygen cylinder, nurse. We nearly ran this one out last time. Very well, sir. Well, good morning, nurse. Good morning, sir. How's the patient? I could do with a pint. That's the preoperative atropine. Thank you very much. We shall keep you long. There's no need to worry. It's only a small thing, hardly an operation at all. Dr. Barnes, ain't it? That's right. Remember me, Joe Higgins? Yes, you're the postman. I thought you would. You're going to do the anaesthetic? 
Yes? You've got a nerve. All right. Perfectly. Loosen it. All right, shove it in. Oh, sister. I think I'll get the anaesthetic on the table. Save time. He's not the nervous type. Very well. You say you're giving me anaesthetic on the table. That's right. Mm-hmm. Samson! Bring the machine in, Woods. Do hurry. Yes, sister. Oh, Samson, you can bring the patient in right away. Yes, sister. Oh, well. Miss Churchill says, man the guns, sweep the skies, plow the fields, and pull the trunk. Who's that? Who's that? I know that voice. I've never heard it before. What's the matter? It's the patient, sir. I think he's a bit excited. He's the only one of them. I've heard it before somewhere. I can't remember where I heard it. Don't worry, Mary. It will all come back later. Yes. Yes? There's no danger, is there? No, of course not. No danger at all. Quite easy, old man. Just relax. Breathe quite normally. That's right. Quite gentle. No hurry at all. Like it's coming. Cut down the gas and increase the oxygen. Not Nothing but oxygen now. Artificial respiration? Yes. Adrenaline, sister. Intravenous coronary, nurse. create such a mistaken impression outside. Of course, I'm not suggesting anyone's in the least to blame. Barnes, are you quite certain that the tubes were uncovered? Positive. You checked the machine? Of course. Hmm. Well, I'm inclined to take the view that the man was still suffering from shock. These things are bound to happen now and then when taking justifiable risks in urgent cases. I'm afraid we can't tell the coroner that. Oh, uh, why not? Because this case wasn't particularly urgent. No. Oh. And there wasn't any risk. The patient was perfectly fit. Hmm, should have taken the anaesthetic without turning a hair. Well, the fact remains he didn't. This would have to happen in my very first month here. It's most distressing. Any views, Bernie? Well, of course, I wasn't there, but it certainly seems a bit strange. Might get a clue from the post-mortem. Clue? Why well, see what you mean. Well, we shall soon know. No doubt it'll all straighten itself out. Thank you, gentlemen. I don't think I need keep you. Thank you, sir. By the way, I don't see that this need be any reason for cancelling tonight's uh, little gathering. 
It started some time ago. Hmm? Well, quite. Well, it makes a break for the nurses. It helps morale. I might even look in a little later myself. That'd be nice. Dr. Barnes, would you mind staying behind a moment? I'll see you at the front. Right. Spoke of our little gathering, he's very needed in Lancy. Great. Oh, great. Barnes, you were in practice in this district before joining the hospital, I believe. I was? Yes. <clears throat> Frankly, I'm told that this won't be the first inquest of its kind you've had to attend at Heron's Park. That's true. The other was four years ago. Mm, yes. Just a little unfortunate. I don't know what you're implying. The surgeon and I were both exonerated. Obviously. I'm not suggesting for a moment. Natural causes, cardiac failure. It might happen to any of us. The fact remains, people talk. They generally do. They will in this case. Let them. I don't know that we can take quite so <laughs> carefree of you. We have the hospital to think of now. I can see that, but after For all... For instance, soon after you came here, I believe an anonymous letter was received. From some illiterate halfwit. Beneath contempt, of course. Still, candidly, I was rather hoping for a gesture from you. Uh? It might... I know it's rather a suggestion. It might simplify matters if you were to discontinue your theatre duties, spending... You mean admit responsibility for Higgins's death? Good heavens, no. If I'm suspended, that's what it amounts to. My dear fellow. I merely suggested that I was hoping the gesture would come from you. Well, it won't. Now, listen, Barnes. Fact, the only gesture I feel like making is far from polite. There's no necessity to be vulgar. I'm sure my predecessor would... Under your predecessor, this hospital had a magnificent record. Partly because he backed his staff to the hilt. This is intolerable. I ask for cooperation. You don't want like cooperation. A... What you want is a scapegoat, neatly trussed up as a convenient sacrifice, in case anyone starts throwing bricks at you. Oh, really, I... Suspend me if you like. If you do, I shall appeal. Good night. Hello. I just heard. What's happening? Everything. I bumped off a patient, insulted the superintendent, and practically been suspended. Large scotch. And a small change. Barney. Small change, all right. Have you really been suspended? Quite hinting at it. It wasn't your fault, no thank you. That seems to be beside the point. Why didn't you come and tell me? After yesterday. We both said a lot of things we didn't mean. Freddie. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Jones. <laughs> When you said just now, you didn't mean what you said yesterday. I didn't say that exactly. Oh, what? Couldn't we forget the whole thing? Oh, all right. Are we back where we were before? I'm awfully fond of you, Barney. You do believe that, don't you? The mere thought of losing you drives me absolutely dotty. I haven't answered my question. Barney... It's not that I mean to be awkward. I naturally like to know where I stand. If you want to boot me out, well, boot me out now. Go. Well? Please don't ask me now, Barney. I'm all in a muddle. I want to be quite sure. Please. All right. Thought about what I was saying last night? Yes. I'm going against the very best medical advice. I'm staying here. You remind me very much of your mother. She wouldn't see a reason either. And now, why shouldn't we speak of it? You won't get anywhere by driving this thing into the back of your mind. Get away, my dear. Bring it into the open and do a good job of forgetting. I mustn't forget ever. She was desperately afraid of the bombing and I left her to face it alone. You'd scarcely be blamed for that. I left her alone. Listen, Aston. Your mother was the most possessive woman I've ever known. Jealously, hysterically possessive. You've no right to say that. The truth isn't less true for being brutal. You have a chance now to live your own life. 
Take it. Myself. Have a drink. I've got one. They make what's called a handsome couple, don't they? Yes. Well, I don't know about him. That's where I have the advantage of you. What? I do know about him. All about him. You think I'm an awful fool, don't you? Why? Oh, you know. Everybody knows by now. It's funny, I can do my work and keep my head. I might be a machine, but when it comes to him, I... it's funny, isn't it? What about a dance? He's sick of me, and I'm sick of myself. Now, look. You're a fool, too. You know that, don't you? We all have our off moments. I saw him kissing her in the ward last night. What? That hurt, didn't it? Oh, you know how I feel. I saw him. I saw the way he looked at her. He's in love. Or as he ever can be. If I were you, I'd have a nice cup of cocoa and go to bed. You know it's the truth. If he wanted to marry her, do you think she'd hesitate if you weren't here? Well, I am here. You won't be much longer. Not if he knows about it. What are you getting at? You killed the girl, didn't you? A few years ago in Heron's Park. That's not true, and I've had just about enough of it. Now there's been another death, and White's had you on the carpet. What's this got to do with Eden? You're in his way, that's all. You're imagining things. I'm not. I'm seeing the truth. You get like that. You get to see people like you never did before. All the rotten things about them. You shut your eyes to once. And that hurts. And it's a comfort. You're in his way, don't you see? What are you getting at? Oh, my mouth. I'm going to join him. <laughs> evening, having to dance with me. Don't be upset. Do you think I don't know? Now, Marion, why can't you be sensible? We neither of us ever pretended it was serious. It was all over months ago, and no harm done. Except to me. I tried to be considerate, but you won't let me. Considerate? You can't afford to be anything else. Well, what do you mean? You see, I happen to know. No one. Can't you guess? I can't. Do you really want me to tell you? Yeah. What are you talking about? What is all this? You know, all right. Higgins died in the theater this morning. It wasn't natural causes, and it wasn't an accident. Shall I tell you what it was? Murder. Yes, he was murdered. I found out how it was done. Not quite by accident, but I found out. And believe it or not, I know who did it. Marion, please. And what's more, I've got something to prove it. I know where it is because I've hidden it. I've hidden it, and I'm the only one that knows where. All right, but I suggest you come and tell Dr. Wright all about it. I'll take you into it. Let me alone. I'll do what I please. Oh, boy. Oh, hello, 
sister. Could I have the key of the operating chair, please? I won't be long. I'm just hanging back for a minute. Okay. Next morning, the 19th, that I myself, in person, arrived on the scene. Considering everything, yes. I What's wrong with him? Mm -hmm. Just the usual slight discomfort after meals, nothing. I have an appointment. 
with the superintendent. Do you mind telling him I'm here? What name? Cockrell, Inspector Cockrell. Yes, Scotland Yard, I'm afraid. <laughs> it's sickening. Dr. White, please. A terrible business, Inspector. Mm. Right. Well, where's the body? In the theatre, just as it was found. Police surgeon there? Yes. I do hope everything can be arranged discreetly. <laughs> Shouldn't think so for a moment. Why not? Press? Do they have to be seen? Can't keep them out. Oh, dear. Why do you mind? Always give me a good write-up. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Lieutenant Calder, do you think? Yes, sir. Hello, Hendrix. Good morning, sir. Kitty's well? Fine. Good. The body's on the floor. Uh, doctor? Any views? Stamped twice, of course. So I see. Surgical knife found in second wound, first in heart, cause of death. Took place nine or ten last night. Couldn't put it in any other. You don't have to. We know within ten minutes. Found these on the floor. Probably worn by whoever did it and left behind. Any fingerprints? What nice set of hers, low down on that covered door. Right hand. Dr. White. Could you assemble all the people you mentioned at once? Somewhere private. I'd like to talk to them. Yes, Inspector. I wish the man would come and get it over. He's conducting a war of nerves, that's what it is. When I think of her lying there like that, and only a few minutes before she was alive... That's and... enough, Freddy. Why the devil is he only after five of us here? That's what I want to know. Because you're the only people who seem to have been concerned with both murders. Simple when you think of it, isn't it? This is Inspector Cockrell. Mr. Eden, Dr. Barnes, Nurse Woods, Sanson, Linley. I like it. Inspector, you said both murders. Mm, Sister Bates and what's his name, Higgins. Who said Higgins was murdered? Well, Sister Bates herself, for one, last night. I understood you were there, Dr. Barnes. Yes, but I didn't realize that she didn't knew. You? What about the Higgins postmortem? Completely negative. But why should anyone want to murder Higgins? Mm. My dear young lady, how should I know? I've only just got here. But I understand from Dr. White that all of you were present when he died. Not Except really. Nurse Linley. <laughs> Interesting cross current. I beg your pardon, except Nurse Lindley, who was, however, on duty in Higgins' ward the whole of the night before. Yes, so I was. And all of you were at the party. So there you are. Are you implying that one of us did it? Well, it seems very likely. Don't you think? Inspector Cockrell, I really can't help feeling that there must be some relatively innocent explanation of this terrible... Why, but please don't be fatuous. Really? We are dealing with two premeditated murders. Can anyone tell me anything they think I ought to know? If so, now is the time. Very well, pause of 30 seconds while you cook up your alibis. Mm. Did you get us here just to insult us? Yeah. I only like to strike an informal note. Well? I've cooked mine up, Inspector. I hope it's good. Oh, turn to a turn. Well, uh, I stayed here for a few minutes after Sister ran out and... Then I went straight back to our rooms in the coach house, uh, for five minutes' walk. Anyone see you? I don't know. Hmm. I'm sure you can do better, Mr. Eden. Aye. Uh, with the exercise of a little imagination. You followed Sister Bates, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Did you catch her? <laughs> As if you'd tell me if you did. I followed her out to the terrace, but she disappeared. I waited a moment or two, but she didn't show up, so I went direct to the sister's room. What? Eden. One moment, Dr. Barnes. Anyone see you? I shouldn't think so. The invisible man. <laughs> Thanks. Now, Sanson, your turn. Is that necessary, Inspector? She's not well, and like the rest of us, she's been up half the night. There's nothing to tell. I was just leaving when Sister Bates stopped the gramophone and spoke to everyone. It upset me, rather. It was all... well. Highly embarrassing. Where Where'd did you go? Straight to the coach house. She was in bed when I got back. Obviously, she couldn't have done it. Unless she was fully dressed under the bedclothes, then she might have had time. That's preposterous. Naturally. Now then, Dr. Barnes, what about you? I went after Eden. Me? Why? Because you thought he might be the murderer, suggested by the late Sister Bates? Oh, that's a charming supposition. <laughs> well? Thank you. What on earth are you suggesting, Barnes? Did you catch him up? No. What did you do then? Went for a walk. Where? In the garden. Why did you want the key for the operating theatre? I didn't. You told Sergeant McCoy last night that Dr. Barnes wanted the key? I... Didn't you? Yes. Why? You're not a theatre nurse, are you? No. And why did you go to the theatre? Just a minute. She discovered the body, Inspector. 
Some of our most celebrated criminals have made a particular point of doing the same. Sister Bates said she'd hidden something. I thought the theatre was the most likely place. I see. Just feminine curiosity. Oh, why not? Not the desire to remove that something before Sister Bates could use it to incriminate anyone. Dr. Barnes, for instance. Oh, Mr. Eden. That's more like it. You're positively excelling yourself this morning, Barnes. You're the young lady's fiance, I believe. I was. Do you agree with his use of the past tense? I couldn't agree more. Uh, another punctured romance. Well, it comes to this. All of you had time, yet none of your stories is corroborated. Oh, perhaps we all did it. I wonder if you realize exactly the sort of person we're dealing with. Let me tell you how I think Sister Bates died. She hurried into the operating theater, unlocked the cupboard, stooped down to get the evidence she had hidden there. What was it? I don't know. Yet. Then she heard something. She turned and saw a figure standing in the dark, masked and gowned and gloved. I imagine she just stayed where she was, staring. Then the murderer came slowly over to her and stabbed her. Dressed her in this soiled theater gown and stabbed her again. Through it, to make it look as if she'd been killed wearing the gown. But why? I don't know that either. But what we do know is that the second wound was made after death. And the murderer was in a hurry. As you see, he tore the gown somewhat. Now, there's one other thing. This bottle of tablets was taken from the poison cupboard. Dr. White has checked the contents and there are four missing. A lethal dose. The murderer has them and will not hesitate to use them. Four of you are in mortal danger from the fifth. Above all, don't trust your neighbor, your roommate, your fiance, or your friend. He or she may be the murderer. Come instead to me. Sister Bates died because she knew something and was foolish enough to say so. I beg of you, all, not to make me say this. I shouldn't do that again if I were you, Inspector. Why not? Because Nurse Sanson is on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Actual or assumed? Perhaps you would prefer to judge that for yourself. Three months ago, her mother was buried under the ruins of her house in a raid. The rescue squad dug for her for three days and then gave it up. Next day, she was fine, still alive. She died an hour later. Esther was there the whole time. You could scarcely be expected to know that. So without bothering to inquire, you scare the life out of her like any flat-footed copper off the beat. The police force has not a monopoly of fallen arches, Dr. Barnes. Ask any chiropodist. Thank you, Mr. Eden. Before the war, you had a house in Heron's Park, I believe. Yes. And you had a practice in the district. I did. Good. Well, then, Dr. Barnes, would you care to accompany me to the theatre? You gave Higgins the anaesthetic. What's that got to do with it? That's what I'm hoping to find out. Did you know him? Only by sight. Nurse Woods is a remarkable woman. Absolutely first class. Ever live in Heron's Park? Not as far as I know. She used to live the other side of London. She took up nursing when her sister died. When? 1940, on the continent. Funny. What is it? Oh, it's nothing. It's just that Higgins thought he knew her voice, that's all. Indeed. Have you any views on nasal guitar? Nothing in particular. Why? Uh, just wondering. I often suffer from it in the mornings. <coughs> That's the machine I used. I see. I brought Higgins in here. I examined him. He was quite fit, so we went ahead. In here? No, I gave it him in the theatre. The coup de grace? The anaesthetic. Is that usual? Not really. It's up to me. Naturally. In that case, in we go. Gave nitrous oxide at first to get him under. Oh, yes, the stuff the dentist gives you. Hmm? Commonly known as laughing gas? Used to be. Actually, the impurities caused the laughs. Oh, just the same as our music halls. 
Then I added oxygen. When he failed to respond... But, uh, my ignorance is simply staggering. Please demonstrate. Black and white oxygen, black nitrous oxide, green carbon dioxide. The rest are spares. I began with nitrous oxide. So, the flow meter registered correctly. When I got him under, I added oxygen. Like this. I didn't like the look of him, so I cut down the nitrous oxide and increased the oxygen. To my surprise, he didn't respond. So I turned off the nitrous oxide altogether, put him on pure oxygen. And then? He simply collapsed. I injected adrenaline. And Nurse Woods gave Corrimin as a last resort. Nurse Woods? Hmm. Could these have been tampered with? Don't see how. In any event, the damage had been done before then. What about this fellow? Carbon dioxide? Hmm. We sometimes use a little to stimulate respiration. Isn't it poisonous? Without oxygen, yes. Use any in Higgins? None at all. You couldn't have coupled up the wrong cylinder by mistake. These machines are as foolproof as they can make them. Besides, we checked everything. It wouldn't be possible to fill, say, an empty oxygen cylinder with carbon dioxide. Good heavens, no. It takes terrific pressure. You're just supposing. Well, the patient would be getting carbon dioxide instead of oxygen. He'd die of, well, lack of oxygen. And you couldn't tell by the flow meter or the post-mortem? No. The whole thing's quite ludicrous. You must bear with me, Doctor. I'm a child in these matters. Can I go now? No, I don't think so. You had a similar experience once before, didn't you? I suppose Dr. White's been talking. Incessantly. It wasn't similar. There was no comparison. And I made no mistake in either case. Splendid. Does Eden think that? Eden? What's he been saying? Nothing to me. You don't like him, do you? If I discuss that with anybody, it'll be with Eden. Why not? Confidentially. Do you think he did it? How should I know? Dr. Barnes. About that anonymous letter. If you're silly enough to attach any importance to a thing like that. Oh, it wasn't that exactly. I was merely wondering if Higgins was the postman who delivered it. Yes, I was idiotically pleased with myself at the time. I'm not so pleased, I think, now. Because there was the vital evidence, the clue to the whole business. If I'd known then, it might have saved another life. The next morning, my presence lay over the hospital like a pall. As I approached, voices were hushed, all eyes turned upon me. Who is the guilty one? When will he be arrested? Who will be next? That is what they were thinking. I found it all tremendously enjoyable. During the rest of that day, I continued my investigations with my accustomed energy. Good afternoon, ladies. <laughs> no need to be alarmed. You're only searching your rooms. Well, I'll be... Did you know Higgins? Personally, no. What precisely was your relationship with Sister Bates? Well, not exactly distant, I take it. Harmless enough, or so I thought. Well, nevertheless, you certainly had a motive for getting rid of her. Only in her imagination. Uh, she might have proved troublesome. She was jealous and possessive. Most women are, if you give them the slightest encouragement. Which you invariably give them, hmm? <laughs> Only sometimes not so slight. Are you trying to make me lose my temper? That is only a secondary object. From time to time, one of those infernal devices roared overhead. But such trifles, of course, did not for a moment distract me from my purpose. Did Higgins say anything that night that you think might help us? He only just got in when the bomb fell. He didn't speak again. No, because I went clean out for a bit. When I came round, all I could hear was the radio. Hmm? The radio? 
Yes, our old wireless set. Still hollering a treat it was, too. <laughs> what was it playing? It wasn't playing. Hmm? It was talking. What about? Well, uh, let me think. Come along now. Surely you can remember? I can't get it out of my mind. When I woke up today, I didn't remember it first. Then it all came back. I went to the window and there was the inspector slinking about outside. Well, he's probably lurking about in the bushes at this very moment. Oughtn't we still back? Why? It's a lovely night. We're still suspects. That's a very good thought to escape from. It's not easy. Have you seen Barney? No. I don't know what to do about him. There's no time you made up your mind. He's behaving so ridiculously. I don't blame him. He's in love with you. Don't blame him for that. I don't. It is a lovely night. Perfect. In such a night as this, when the sweet wind did gently kiss the trees and they did make no noise, in such a night, Troilus, methinks, mounted the Trojan walls and sighed his soul towards the Grecian tents where Cressid lay that night. In such a night did young Lorenzo swear he loved her well, stealing her soul with many vows of faith and ne'er a true one. Good night, Mr. Eden. Good night, Dr. Barnes. Nurse Woods. Jane Woods. Where she lived, when she came to London, everything you can find out. Ring me right away. Bye. So much for the 19th. The morning of the 20th dawned like any other. A condemned man ate a hearty breakfast. Have some jam. No, thanks. You've eaten hardly anything. I've had quite enough. Besides, we ought to be going. Well, we've ten minutes yet. How about the washing up? I'll come back at nine o'clock and do that. Here's Freddy. Well, I wonder what today will bring. No, it's not. What? Freddy. Anyone in? Oh, hello. Good morning, sir. Oh. Good morning. I didn't startle you, did I? Oh, no, sir. I clumped to warn you. <laughs> he clumped. I've been wandering around for about an hour. Thought I'd just drop in, see if you're all all right. Well, we're still here, sir. Somewhat to our surprise. Have some tea. Nothing go bump in the night? Only my heart. Oh, stick the kettle on, Esther. No, please don't bother. It's got to go on again for Freddie's hot water bottle. Her bedroom's freezing. If you're looking for Freddy, she's not back yet. Oh, no, really, I wasn't. I just dropped in. Oh, here she is. Hello, children. It's parky for an August day. I thought I'd just see Nurse Linley home and come in and see if you were all right. <laughs> Seems to be a popular movement. Well, I'll push off. Got a cup of tea. Esther's getting it. Esther's not. Not until someone gives me a shilling. The gas has died on us. Oh, dear. It's my turn, and I forgot. Unless there's one in my bag. Bob's for the love of Allah. Heads. Good gracious. Not a bob among us. That's funny. How about you, sir? Nothing doing. Ready, my pet? You'll have to go to bed with half a lukewarm water bottle. Well, I could sit over and ask McCoy. Oh, of course not. I'm too tired to care. I hardly slept at all yesterday. Who did? None of us, I imagine. Speaking as the life and soul of the party, I just can't keep it up. 
Oh, don't worry, darling. You've been wonderful, really, you have. It's this wondering and watching. I don't believe it was one of us. It can't be. And yet somebody must have killed him. But why? Why Higgins? I was thinking during the night about that gown. What gown? One Sister Bates was found in. What about it? We well, you know the hole in it where she was stabbed? Mm hmm. I knew there was something that seemed wrong. I know it sounds silly. It suddenly dawned on me what it was. What? It was... Shut silly. up. If you've anything to tell, tell it to the inspector. Aren't you being a little fancy, boy? I must say, I can't see any harm in it. Oh, of course not. The inspector did say if we found out anything, to go to him and not trust anyone. He happens to be quite right. What's the matter with him? Doesn't your intuition stretch that far? Well, it was the only thought I had. When I wake up, I expect it'll seem too silly for words. I only brushed my teeth. I'll go and get your hot water bottle. Are you quite happy about the way you're behaving? Self-criticism has never been one of my failings. I hope you're not confusing Freddy with the kind of woman who used to dither in and out of your consulting room in a flutter of checks and eyelashes. Ah, those were the good old days. I miss Jack. She's a bit romantic and not very experienced. And like the rest of us, she's been under a nervous strain for a long time. Well. I'd hate to see her giving up someone permanent like Barney and falling for your practiced and rather hollow charm. You're much too kind. I'm serious. Supposing I were too. What? Serious. I might be. Well, I think we'd better keep this conversation practical. Have it your own way. Think it over. My dear Nurse Woods, who am I to make the course of true love run any smooth? All right. Only I warn you, Barney won't bottle it up much longer. Any moment now, he'll grab the nearest grandfather clock and break it over your head. Whereupon I, for one, will give three rousing cheers. Sir. Anything the matter? It appears I'm a menace. To whom? Unprotected females. You only just discovered that. Strictly speaking, no. Then why complain? Well, I'm not complaining. Ready, Woody? Here I come. I hadn't been getting my cap. Come on, we ought to be there. Coming, sir? In a minute. I think I ought to give Barney a run for his money. You have been warned. Bye-bye, Freddy. See you tonight. Bye-bye. Get me Inspector Cockrell, will you? What? Well, see if you can find him and ring me back. Everything's ready now, sister. Just going back to the coach house for a few minutes to clear up. Is that all right? Very well, nurse. Only get back before 9.30. Yes, sister. Cockerell? No, Doctor, it's Henry. The inspector's busy at the moment. Can I give him a message? I wanted to talk to him. Well, it's about Nurse Lindley. Yes, I think it might be important. 
Tell him you can find me here in casualty reception. Thank you. Dr. Barnes was asking for you, sir. What does he want? Said it was something about Nurse Lindley. He's in casualty reception. Right. Good luck. How's Freddy? Still unconscious. Can I see her? No. But why not? Because I say so. Well, the murderer has achieved his first object. He or she has silenced Nurse Lindley. What? At least for the time being. Could it possibly have been an accident? The only accident was that she survived, thanks to Nurse Sensen. However, it has simplified the problem. How? The suspects are now reduced to four. One, two, three, four. If you're a suspect, it's less work for me. My ideal is a 40-hour week. Oh, for heaven's sake, if you'd only come when I asked for you. Perhaps if you'd sent for me sooner. You left it a bit late, didn't you? How was I to know that? Unless you yourself were the guilty party. A just point, Dr. Barnes. You all knew that the gas had failed, correct? You all knew that she'd gone upstairs to sleep. You went up there alone with a hot water bottle. You pointed out yourself that Esther saved her life. I exclude none of you from this, Mr. Eden. And you also slipped up there alone. Without a hot water bottle. Mr. Eden remained behind when everyone else had gone. Dr. Barnes was within easy distance across the yard. Each one of you could have slipped up to her room and turned on that tap. You all knew Nurse Woods' habit of going back at 9.15 to boil a kettle for washing up. And of course, none knew that better than Nurse Woods herself. You told me you'd never met Higgins. I hadn't. Does Horton's farm, a couple of miles from Heron's Park, mean anything to you? What? You lived there once, didn't you? Up to 15 years ago. Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Why would he? Wait, with your mother and your sister. Yes. Is there anything wrong in that? No, no. You're a theatre nurse, aren't you? Of course. With access to anaesthetics and theatre gowns? I suppose so. Mr. Bates was stabbed through a theatre gown. Yes. Nurse Lindley said she knew something about that same gown just before her life was attempted. Well? And Higgins recognised your voice. He couldn't have done. I thought he did. Do you know the last thing that Higgins heard as he lay in the debris of that rescue post? How should I know? Hendricks. Listen. And you'll hear what Higgins heard. What on Listen. Meanwhile, our attacks have continued without a pause since June the 15th and have laid much of the British capital in ruins. As the desperate Churchill lies frantically to save his faith, London and the home counties are reeling under the incessant fire of our terrible V1. This is Germany calling. This is Germany calling. A BBC monitor recording of a broadcast from Hamburg on the evening of the 17th. Woody. Scarcely that. Her sister. What? A twin sister of my information, correct? Am I right? Reichsender Hamburg. Das waren Nachrichten in English. Yes. You're right. You were very fond of your sister, weren't you? Yes. And ashamed for her. I tried to hide it. I, I said she died in France in 1940. I, I'd have done anything. Including murder? <laughs> murder? Well, I had the motive, didn't I? Higgins might have put two and two together. And I had the opportunity each time. And I did go to Freddy's room alone. And I did put the shilling in the meter. 
Well? Why don't you all say what you're thinking? Why don't you tell them? Why don't you tell them I did it? Now, who on earth said you did? Oh, I didn't. <coughs> Leave her. The inspector has a charming aptitude for traveling in ever-decreasing circles, which I fear can only have one end. Someday, Mr. Eden, I must try my hand at removing an appendix. I fancy that progress will be slow until I discover what Nurse Lindley was going to say about that gown. She'll tell you that when she comes around. Dr. Barnes, she may never come round. What do you mean? Her skull was fractured in her fall. What? Come back. I must see her. I said I come back. Why? It can't do any good. And I can't trust you. Yes, I'm sorry to have not finished. There is pressure on her brain, which I'm told can only be relieved by an operation, if she's to live and tell me what she knows. What, refining? So Mr. Purdy says. Well, that's very serious. The operation will take place at 9.30 tomorrow morning. All of you will undertake exactly the same duties as you did in the case of Higgins. What? You can't do that. You prefer not to give the anesthetic? I prefer not to see her killed. The one doesn't necessarily follow from the other. Even if it did in the case of Higgins, Nurse Woods. Do you remember accurately all that you did before? Yes, I think so. You're willing to do the same again? All right. Thank you. Now, Sensen, how about you? Are you willing to perform precisely the same duties as you did before? Yes, I suppose so. May I point out that you can't exactly reproduce the circumstances of Higgins' death, which I presume is what you're after? No, why not? Because I shan't be operating. If you refuse, I can only draw one conclusion. In this case, the wrong one. You see, I don't happen to be a brain surgeon. Very plausible, Mr. Eden. But if Mr. Purdy operates, do you object to assisting him? No. Thank you. You're not going to let him touch her? Why not? May I remind you that Higgins died before I could operate? What are you suggesting? Only that the chief danger seems to lie in the giving of the anaesthetic. You hinted that to Dr. White, didn't you? I did not. Why should I? You had something to gain if I'd been forced to leave. Did? What? Freddy. Now, who on earth gave you that idea? Sister Bates, if you want to know. Just before she was killed. Just before you met her in the garden. Mr. Eden. Yes, sir. Pardon me interrupting, gentlemen, but did you meet Sister Bates in the garden? Yes. And you never told me. I saw no point in making things more difficult to myself than they already were. <laughs> you expect him to believe that? He might prefer the truth to your jealous suspicions. Surgery, mixing it with an LRCP. <laughs> what a delicious spectacle. We might arrange a future contest in aid of some deserving charity, don't you think? <laughs> Perhaps the police orphanage, Inspector. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose I ought to be glad that my suspects haven't been reduced still further. And I take it we shall all meet tomorrow morning in the operating theatre at 9.30. I shall ask Dr. White to make the necessary arrangements. It ought to be quite dramatic. Well, how is Nurse Lindley? Oh, much better, thank you. Pulse and temperature back to normal. Splendid. You've had a very narrow escape, young lady. Yes. Have you told them all? I have indeed. I've convinced them that Nurse Lindley is at death's door. They have agreed to cooperate. Do you seriously intend to go through with this fantastic scheme? I do indeed. Well, I suggest that it's most direct. You word perfect? Oh, I think so. Depressed fracture of the occiput necessitating craniotomy. Really? Even to say that's an achievement. But what about Mr. Eden? As your assistant, would he expect to examine Nurse Lindley? Uh, no, not necessarily. No, I'll show him these X-rays. Pre-war patient of mine. Uh, oh. Yeah. Very nice fracture. Recover? Oh, yes. Remarkable. Surely no one in their senses would make another attempt? Not in their senses, certainly. But it must have occurred to you that we are dealing with an unbalanced mind. A one-track mind that can see things only one way. In every other respect, as sane as I am. Or even as you are, Dr. White. 
Possibly. You think what happened before will happen again? I think they'll try. Well, I wash my hands of the whole business. You couldn't do better. Nurse Lily. Yes? I'll explain to you the risks that you'll be running. But if you wish to change your mind now, I'll quite understand. No, I've thought it over and I'll do as you tell me. Thank you, I'm very grateful. Meanwhile, absolute secrecy. I know. Till tomorrow, is there anything I can do for you? Well, could I see someone? Who, Mr. Eden? No, Dr. Barnes. Dr. Barnes? Well, his style is less polished, but his footwork is superior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never mind. No, my dear, I'm afraid you can't see him. There can be no exceptions. Still willing? Of course. Good. This is absolute lunacy. I disagree. You see, I think I know who did it. <laughs> Now, is everything laid out exactly as it was before? All correct. You're quite satisfied? Yes. Right. Take the whole lot back again, sister. What now, sir? Yes, now, change every single item with a fresh one. What's the idea? We can't be too careful, can we? Okay. Allow me. This is indeed an honor, sir. Nervous. Paralytic. You don't look it. Did you do this last time? Yes. It's a new oxygen cylinder. Do you think anything will happen? Oh, yes. I think so. Well, in that What's case... What's this? Lube can the airway tube. Change it. Where's Eden? On his way, I hope. Please, Doctor. Ah, oh, there you are, Mr. Eden. We're nearly ready. Miss Sensen, will you bring in the patient? Yes, sir. Are you ready, Doctor? Yes. Oh, Doctor Barnes. I believe I know why you gave Higgins the anaesthetic on the table. Why? Because you wanted witnesses. Hmm? All right. Right, go ahead. Nitrous oxide. for the oxygen. Oxygen. Responding. More oxygen. She's collapsing. Don't give her any more. Cut off the anesthetic. She's not getting any. It's pure oxygen. She must have oxygen.
I can't. Cut off the oxygen. What's the idea? Paddy. All right. All right. Paddy, the spare oxygen. Can you change it? Yes, here. Yeah. Right. She's responding now. She'll be all right. Inspector, I'm completely bewildered. Give me a pair of scissors. Green. Yes. Green for carbon dioxide. You've been pumping CO2 into her. And Higgins? Precisely. A green cylinder repainted black and white in each case. Does that suggest anything to you? What? The salvage bin you've been having repainted also in black and white. Good heavens. That's where they got the paint. She's coming round. Freddy. If I were you, I'd walk about the theatre for a bit. The poor girl must be feeling the strain. What? With a fractured skull. Be possibly disappointed to learn that a young lady's cranium is at least as sound as yours. Hello, Barney. It's all right. You're safe. Yes, her life is no longer in any danger. But of course, she told me yesterday what she was going to say about that gown. What was it? She said the hole the knife made was too big. Almost as if something had been cut out. She was quite right. Something had been cut out? Of course. But I couldn't for the life of me think what. Until just now, when I noticed this smear of black paint and Nurse Wood's gown. Nurse Woods, have you any idea what it was that Sister Bates had hidden in his theatre? No. It was this. But you might know because it happens to be your gown. Mine? Mm, the one you wore last time, when Higgins died. And look, just here. Curiously enough, there used to be another smear of black paint from the first cylinder. The one that killed Higgins. And Sister Bates spotted it. And jumped to the right conclusion. You see, one thing the murderer couldn't control was the time the paint took to dry. About 12 hours. But why dress Sister Bates up in the thing and stab her again? To distract attention from the tear where the paint had been by sticking the knife through it. It's all right. Do you think I could sit down? Of course, Nurse Sensen. Yes, it must have been a terrifying moment for the murderer, alone here in this theatre with Sister Bates dead at his feet. In the moonlight, with the winds screeching outside and the window slamming and opening. Slamming and opening, with the gown clutched in a dead woman's hand, with its telltale streak of paint. And time pressing, so that any action was better than none, and first thoughts had to be best. Can't you see it? For heaven's sake, come to the point. Oh, but that is the point. Time. Each of you had a motive for killing Higgins after you'd recognized him, and which of you had time? Was there someone you thought would be incriminated if Nurse Lindley had been allowed to speak yesterday? I don't understand you. I think you do. Who was it? I don't know. Nobody. I can't tell you anything. I don't... Can't you leave her alone? I've told you before, she's in no state. Why, on the day before Higgins' death, did Mr. Eden urge you to leave this hospital? I don't know. Because this was the worst possible place for her, I've explained that before. I warn you, she's in no condition to be questioned, and you can place no reliance on her answers. You can't I, Mr. Eden. That's most illuminating. What time did you leave the ward after examining Higgins the night before he died? Mm, what's that got to do with Answer it? my question. About 10.30. Where did you go? Back to my room. Did you pass the paint store on the way? Probably. What became of those tablets that were taken from the poison cupboard? How should I know? Nurse Lindley, do you feel well enough to talk? Yes, if I can help. Well, now, please think very carefully. What time did you go on duty on the night before Higgins died? I was a bit late, about five past ten. Whereupon, presumably, Nurse Sanson left? Yes, as soon as I got there. Mm, say about ten, ten. What time did Nurse Sanson reach your quarters? It was late, wasn't it? Yes, uh, she said Freddie had overslept. What time was it? Well, uh, quarter to eleven, but, but I'm sure she... Thank you. It should have taken you five minutes, yet it took you nearly forty. Why? I don't know. I didn't feel very well. Did you well. pass the paint store? Yes, I suppose I did. Did you see anyone or anything in there that made you pause or stop? 
Can't remember. Try to. Was the door open? It may have been. Was there a light on inside? I don't know. I can't remember. Did you see anyone or anything in there? Did you? <laughs> oh, were you there alone? Can't you see she's had enough? I've warned you, Inspector. Mr. Eden, why do you keep on interrupting? Are you afraid of something she might say? I've given you my reasons. This time, I'd like the truth. May I speak to her alone? No! Are you going to answer me, Mr. Eden? Stop him! Eden! Eden, open this door! Eden! I'm sorry, Esther. I've got to. Look out! Mr. Senson, I arrest you for the willful murder of Joseph Higgins and Marion Bates, and for the attempted murder of Frederick Linley. I must warn you that anything you say may be used in evidence. Yes. What? Can't be. It is. Eden. It's not true. How could it be? She got me out of my oh, room. Yes, she intended to make a dramatic rescue, just too late. But she arrived back a bit too early. Then she saw me approaching, smashed the window and dragged you out. And saved my life. And contrived to let you fall headlong down the stairs. By that time, she had to be content with second best. Esther, you didn't do it, did you? I did. You knew, didn't you? I was almost certain, but I didn't know how. But why should she want to kill Higgins? What had he done? Tell them. Higgins was head of the rescue squad that left her mother to die. What? That is how it seemed to her. They had no choice, but she couldn't see it that way. She transferred her obsession of guilt to Higgins, the blame she attached to herself for leaving her mother alone. By punishing him, she was redeeming herself. I don't understand that. I was quite right, of course. Could I have a drink of water, please? Freddy. But Freddy and Sister Bates. Yes, that was bad. But I couldn't let them talk, otherwise I should have been found out and punished for something that was right. Esther, I'm sorry. You understand, don't you? Water quick, she's fainted. She's dead. What? She can't be dead. She can't be dead. Can't you do something? It's too late. Mr. Eden, you have deliberately connived at her death. Have I? Huh. You followed her in here with that hypodermic. Quite true. There is a penalty for helping a criminal to evade the consequences. Aren't you being a little rash? You don't know yet how she died. Well? Have you forgotten those tablets? I have not, and neither I imagine that you forget them. They killed Esther. A lethal dose, self-administered. So? When I realized it must be Esther, I knew she was definitely insane and that she had the tablets. I wanted to be ready, but you came over to me and I was too late to stop her. Yes, Inspector, that was the antidote. The antidote? And, why? and you knocked it out of my hand. When I took my departure that evening, it was not with the feeling that this had been one of my more successful investigations. In fact, it still seems to me that I fell down rather badly on the case. Alternative, sir, but to offer you my resignation in the confident hope that you will not accept. Full stop. <laughs>